Hello again. Today in our literature lesson we're going to be looking at something which comes as part of a word and those things are called prefixes. So we're going to see if we can understand and use a range of different prefixes. I wonder if you know what prefixes are already. I bet you've seen prefixes quite a lot but you might not know what they actually are. Well today we're going to understand what they are. We're going to see if we can explain what a prefix is. We're going to see if we can recognise where prefixes have been used in words. We're going to see if we can write some sentences containing words with prefixes. And we're going to see if we can understand how prefixes can change the meanings of some words. It can also change the way that we can use that word. So here are four examples of different prefixes that can be added on to the beginning of a word. Pre means before. So prefixes go before a word. If I had a word like kind, kind means caring, considerate, compassionate. If I added U and N onto the front, what word would I make? I'd make unkind. Unkind means that they're not caring, they're not compassionate. It changes the meaning of the word completely. Just by adding those two letters at the front, that prefix, it changes the word from meaning something really nice to something really negative. Miss, dis and re can be added to the words, again to change the meanings. Now let's think about why we use those different prefixes. If I'm using un, miss or dis, all of those have negative meanings. They mean not, and usually they change the meaning of the word to mean the opposite of what it did before. If I'm using the prefix re, re means again. So if I'm doing something, I could do it. If I'm doing it again, I would redo it. Re adds that to the front because I'm doing it again. It's a second chance to do something. Let's have a look at some words containing the un, miss, dis and re prefixes. So I've got a table here with lots of different words. Let's have a look at a few of the words, not all of them together. But you can have pause the video and have a look at them but yourself afterwards. This word, clear. Clear means you can see it. It means that it's completely obvious to you. But if you don't think it's clear, if you think that you, know, you can't see it very clearly, you would say it's unclear. So you add un to the front to make it that word which doesn't mean the same as clear. It means the opposite of clear. Again, we've got the word happy here. Happy, feeling jolly, feeling cheerful. Unhappy is completely the opposite. So it changes it to a word which means the opposite. Let's look at some miss words. Misspell. If you spell something correctly, brilliant. But if you spell it wrong, you've misspelt it. It's the opposite. Behave. Hopefully all of you have been behaving yourselves at home when you've been doing your home learning with your parents. If you do the opposite of that, then you misbehave. So miss is that prefix you add to the start, which means the opposite. Let's have a look at dis. Again, we've got the word appear. Appear means, oh, you can see it, it's appeared to me. But disappear means something's hidden. It means the opposite. Loyal. Loyal means trustworthy, somebody that you can have faith in. Disloyal means they must have broken your trust at some point. You can't believe anything they're going to say. So again, it's the opposite. So un, miss and dis means opposite, but remember re means again. So I've already talked about do, redo something. You can have arrange. I can arrange things into an order. If I don't like that order, I can rearrange them. I can put them in a different order. I'm doing it again. Play. We can play a video. And if we don't understand that video, we can go back, play it again. We can replay that video. So re is a really good prefix for if you're doing something again. Now today, I'd like you to go to DB Primary and download your task. But today, you've got two different activities to do. Number one, you're going to see if you can think of as many words as you can with the prefixes un, dis, miss and re. You can use some of the words that I've already discussed with you if you can remember them. You could use the internet to research them. You could even use a dictionary if you have one to find these words which have these prefixes at the front. And I'd like to make your own table to sort these words. When you finish that, task two, I'd like you to choose one of each word that you've come up with in your table and I'd like you to write a sentence containing that word with a prefix so that you understand what that word means. But as a challenge, I want you to use a conjunction in that sentence as well. So it can't be a simple sentence, it has to be a compound or a complex sentence to add extra detail, okay? Again, when you finish that, come back to this video and we'll have a look at the open and next step. So our objective today was to understand and use a range of different prefixes. Hopefully you were successful. Do you think you could explain what a prefix is? 
if you don't think you can quite yet, maybe that could be your next step, something to work on. Do you recognise where prefixes have been used? So if you were reading a piece of text, would you be able to see a prefix and go, oh yeah, I, I remember learning about that. I, I know that's a prefix because un means the opposite. Are you able to write sentences with words containing particular prefixes or maybe you need to work on your writing a little bit more? And do you understand how prefixes can change the meanings of some words? So if you've got a word, a root word, and you add a prefix onto the front, can you change the meaning of that word and do you understand what that word now means now you've added the prefix?